This is Dr. Feblowitz with Full Code. We are back in action with a brand new walkthrough. Let's get right to it. So today we'll be looking at case 79 with chief complaint of confused. This is available for free on our Apple or Android version and anytime at our website fullcode.com. All right, so here's your introduction to the case. The patient was brought in by a friend. The triage nurse notes a 22-year-old male who was drinking tonight, found by a friend to be confused, a possible head injury, GCS 14, no ingestions reported other than alcohol. So this is your patient, Eric. He's a 22-year-old male, witnessed to be confused after from coming back from the bathroom in a New Year's Eve party. He was seen to be bleeding from the right side of his scalp and has had progressively increased confusion since this time. A friend brought him in. No known past medical history, no medications or allergies. Since the patient's altered, there's really no ability to perform a view of systems, so we'll skip right to the exam. Okay, the first thing you need to note about this patient's presentation is that he is somnolent. He is not responding normally. It's a low GCS. So we're going to proceed right to our ABCs. He's not breathing normally. He's displaying sonorous respirations and noisy upper airway sounds. We're also going to assess his circulation. Two plus pulses, so we know that he has good perfusion at least. We have this history of possible head trauma. It shows a right parietal scalp hematoma, so we're also going to examine the neck as well. We're going to assess the chest wall, assess for signs of other injury, assess for normal breath sounds. We're going to assess the abdomen for signs of trauma to the abdomen as well. The back, you need to roll him and get a good look at his back, assess the spine, look at the extremities and for signs of other injuries. Look at the skin for bruising, for bleeding, for any other abnormalities. And then finally, neurologically, that's especially important. He's unconscious, he's not responding normally, not identifying painful stimuli normally. So what are we going to do to stabilize this patient? First things first, we're going to get him on the monitor, get an understanding of his hemodynamic status. You'll see that he's bradycardic, a slow heart rate, and hypertensive, an elevated blood pressure. And together with suspected head trauma, that's concerning for a Cushing reflex. There may be significant head trauma, significant increase in intracranial pressure. So we're going to get access, and we're going to go ahead and get prepared to intubate the patient. The patient is displaying decreased response, abnormal mental status, not protecting his airway, so those are indications to proceed with intubation. Now, sometimes we pre-treat with lidocaine or fentanyl, but the evidence is limited as to whether that helps. So we're gonna use a standard induction agent, Atomidate, and then we're gonna use rocuronium as our paralytic, a non-depolarizing agent to blunt the increase in ICP. And we're gonna proceed with intubating the patient to protect their airway. Next, let's pause to consider our differential diagnosis. Remember that you can do this at any point in the case and come back to modify it. So this is a patient with some sort of unknown trauma burden that we suspect a significant head injury. Um, so there's potential for a number of different intracranial injuries, an interparenchymal hemorrhage, a subarachnoid hemorrhage. There's also a pretty wide range of potential traumatic injuries to the head as well as to the body. So we think this is something probably much worse than a concussion, such as possibly an epidural hematoma, um, but he could also have other significant injuries. He could have intra-abdominal injuries, intrathoracic injuries, pelvic fracture, retroperitoneal injuries, injuries to the spinal cord. You have to consider a very broad differential in the trauma patient that is unresponsive. So come back to this list and modify it throughout. Now that we have the patient somewhat stabilized, protecting their airway, intubated, we're going to proceed with investigating the underlying trauma. Um, so in any altered patient, you're going to get a finger stick glucose. You would have done that probably right at the beginning. Um, in a trauma patient, a fast exam ultrasound is definitely very reasonable, especially when they're altered. And then we're going to get some basic blood work to assess for underlying bleeding, to assess a basic coagulation profile, to be prepared to give them blood products if needed. Um, and most importantly, in this patient, we're going to do advanced imaging to understand the nature of the injury. So head and neck, absolutely, in the patient with suspected trauma. Um, but in this patient who is unresponsive, very, very reasonable to complete a pan scan and look at the chest and abdomen because they cannot tell you anything more about what happened. So here's our imaging. 
let's go back to that CT image of the head and there is the key. So you see that lens shape that is characteristic of a epidural hematoma consistent with likely a bleeding meningeal artery secondary to trauma, a very significant and dangerous head injury. So now what are we going to do to intervene to try to help this patient to try to improve their outcomes? There's limited things we can do to intervene. This patient needs a definitive surgical intervention, but we can do something to potentially decrease intracranial pressure, and that's osmotic diuresis via either hypertonic saline or mannitol. Additionally, we've intubated the patient, so we're going to decompress the stomach, place an OG tube in the emergency department setting. The patient's also sustained multiple cut scrapes and injuries, so while there's time and we're waiting for the definitive intervention, we're going to give him a Tdap vaccine. But this patient ultimately needs something more. Who is going to be the person to help you with that intervention? So I want to step back a moment and go back to our diagnosis that was seen on CT. This epidural hematoma, that characteristic lens shape pool of blood that is expanding and creating mass effect, pushing, creating midline shift and obliterating the ventricles, depressing this patient's mental status. The only thing that is really going to help is a definitive intervention by a neurosurgeon. So that's who we're going to call. They're going to meet you in the OR. So now we can close out the case with our final diagnosis and disposition, diagnosis of epidural hematoma, secondary to trauma, and we're going directly to the operating room with the neurosurgical team. So let's review some key learning points from this case. In any altered patient with an unknown mechanism, unknown intoxication, it's really important to maintain a broad differential and to perform a thorough examination. In any patient with a significantly depressed mental status, displaying signs of inability to protect their airway, that's when you need to consider intubation, especially when you need to facilitate a further rapid diagnostic workup. When it comes to intubation, pre-medication such as lidocaine and fentanyl is of limited value, um, but consider a non-depolarizing paralytic such as rocuronium. It's important in any such patient to evaluate for reversible causes. The quickest and easiest one to rule out is hypoglycemia with a finger stick. You then want to proceed with a very thorough evaluation for trauma, have a low threshold to perform a PAN scan to assess the entire trauma burden. And in this case and in others, do not delay definitive management for other procedures or interventions. This patient needs an operative intervention, a neurosurgical specialist for definitive care. So just a reminder, you can play this case free anytime via web browser or via our app. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more of these videos. Let us know what you think, your questions, your comments, what you think about the walkthrough videos. We're happy to hear from our users. I'm Dr. Febelitz with Full Code. Thanks for watching.